Hello, Axel Wilkinson here from HitFilm.com and today I wanted to take a look at the masking tools found in HitFilm. Now if you're not familiar with the concept of masking, basically it's just a method of creating selections so that you can take specific areas or portions of the frame and show them or hide them depending on how you apply the mask. All of HitFilm's masking tools are found in the viewer tool set. Now in order to see those you'll need to be in a composite shot. If we switch to the editor you'll see that those tools are not available. But once you've converted a clip into a composite shot there are a number of masking tools. These include the rectangle mask, the ellipse mask, and the freehand mask. So let's look at how to add masks to our footage. In this green screen shot we have some lights and other gear intruding into our frame that we need to remove. So in order to do that, make sure you have the layer selected that you want to apply the mask to, and then choose one of the masking tools. In this case, let's use the rectangle mask, and then we can just click and drag to define the area of the frame that we want to keep. There we can start to see the edge of that other light, so I'll back it off. And when we release the mouse button, the shape is set, and everything outside of our shape is immediately eliminated. We can also adjust a number of details about the mask in the control settings for it. So let's take a look at those control settings one at a time. The first control, inverted, just controls whether the area inside or outside of the mask is retained. Blend mode provides a menu of different options to control how multiple masks will interact with one another. Since we have only one mask here, we'll leave this set to add. The path control allows you to animate the position or shape of the mask over time. In order to adjust the shape of the path, you'll need to select one of two tools. If you grab the selection tool, you can see immediately control points appear on the mask, and now you can transform the shape of this mask using these control points. If you hold Alt, then you can grab the corner points and rotate the mask. The second tool for editing mask shapes is the freehand mask tool, which allows you to edit the individual control points that make up the mask shape. You can also use this tool to add additional control points to any mask by clicking on any of the lines that make up the mask shape. If you click and drag, then you can create curved control points where you can adjust the handles to create more complex shapes. The opacity control is fairly straightforward. If you reduce the opacity, you can see that it's uh, making the area that the mask retains more transparent. Expansion allows us to adjust the size or scale of a mask without changing its shape. Particularly with more complex freehand shapes, it can be very useful to adjust the size without having to move the control points. And Feather allows you to soften the edges of the mask. Let's turn the feather strength up a bit, and then from the feather menu, let's select Out. This creates a feather on the outside of the mask shape at 112 pixels or whatever value we assign to the feather strength. If we select in, you can see that now the feather is happening inside the mask. And if we select both, then we get a feather that's twice the size because it combines the inside and outside feathers. And the final control roundness adjusts how sharp the corners of your mask are. So if we increase the roundness control. Actually, let me turn the feather off and you can see that more clearly. As we increase that, you can see how the corners are just rounded off to create a smoother shape. If you have a 3D effect, for example, if I quickly drop a gunfire effect into this composite, if we twirl open that layer on the timeline, you can see that there is no listing for masks. If we did want to add a mask to that layer, we first need to right click and convert it to a composite then that, if we return to our original layer, you can see flattens it into a 2D layer, which we can then add masks to in the normal fashion. That's a very important point to remember. If you ever need to mask a 3D effect, you'll first need to convert it to a composite shot so as to flatten it into a 2D layer. I'm going to delete this layer since we don't need it, and we'll move on to freehand masks. Now we'll select our layer, and the freehand mask allows you to create any shape you want just by creating a series of points. You can click and drag to do curved shapes as we saw before and you just work your way around and click once again on the first point you created to close the shape. While editing the control points of any mask shape 
you can right click on any point to edit the way that the handles behave. Make Curved Locked locks the two handles together and guarantees that the line will make a smooth curve as it passes through the control point. Make Curved Unlocked breaks the two handles apart so they can be adjusted independently. This allows you to create an angle while still having curved lines on either side. Make Linear removes the handles and creates two straight lines intersecting at the control point. You can also delete points from this menu. The number of points in a mask is fixed throughout its entire life, so if you do delete this point here, the point will be removed through the entire duration of the mask. Okay, so now that we've seen how to add and edit individual masks, let's look at a project where we'll use a number of masks in combination with each other to create a lower third title for the intro of this music video. This is actually a video that I worked on myself, that's me playing the drums. And we're going to make a new title to introduce the song. So the first step is we need to create a plane, and then we will use various masks to trim this plane and make the shape we want. So I already have a color selected here that I'm going to use. I'll click Create, and now that plane is added and it completely covers our footage. So we want to start by using a rectangular mask, and we will drag to create a rectangle that basically covers the lower third of our frame. So here's our first mask. Let's right-click, choose Rename, and we will call that Main Rectangle. Okay, now in the properties for this mask, we don't really need to change anything. Uh, we can leave that one just as it is. And then we'll add a second mask to add a little bit of detail to the bottom edge of this. And so for that, we're going to use a freehand mask. And then we'll just draw four points to create a trapezoid that overlaps onto the bottom of this first rectangle. Okay, so there's the shape we want, but we want to cut that shape out of our first mask. So in order to do that, we want to adjust the blend mode of this second mask. To make it easy to keep track of things, let's rename this one to Lower Cutout. Incidentally, this blend mode menu can also be found here on the timeline next to any mask. And so for this one, we're going to use Subtract to subtract the shape that we've just created from the original shape that we were working with. Now, I don't want it to be quite that deep, and so let's select that again. We'll use our selection tool and we'll drag that mask down a bit just to make that cutout a bit more shallow. All right, now let's add some detail to the top as well. We're going to use another freehand mask. We'll create another angled line on this end. I'll try to get the bottom straight going across here and then I'll just come around to complete the shape. Now this is obviously a little bit crooked so I can grab that point now that the mask is completed and straighten it out a bit. There we go. And then once again, we want to switch the blend mode on this mask to subtract to remove that shape. And we'll rename that mask to upper cutout. Now, to make it a little bit more interesting, let's add a feather to this mask. And let's adjust that feather to out. So we'll just be feathering outside of our mask. And then we can increase the feather strength. Uh, let's go about 90. And actually, all I want to feather is this edge beside the mask. I don't want this feather down below. So, to restore that area, we can just use one more rectangle mask, and then we'll start right at this edge, and we'll drag to fill in that area that was removed by the feather. Now you can see we're not quite over far enough to that edge, and so let's grab the selection tool and just bump that over. And there's our final shape, created using just a plane and four masks. To make this a little more interesting, I'm going to add a gradient to this. I'll skip the details of that, but there we go. Now we just need to add our text, which I've magically done now. Okay, we are going to use one more rectangle mask to create a wipe that will gradually reveal this lower third that we've created. So to start with, let's select our rectangular mask tool. We'll make sure our layer is selected, and then we can just drag to create our mask shape off the left hand side of the canvas. Let's do a bit of renaming again real quick. We'll rename our last mask Center Fill, which covered that feather, and then we can rename the mask we've just created to Wipe. So now we can keyframe the path for this mask to reveal the shape 
that we've created. So we'll start with it off to the left here. We advance a bit through time and then we can create a new keyframe uh, with a new shape that will reveal our entire title. Now we're going to use a blend mode called Intersect to create the wipe. What this blend mode does is it takes the shape of the mask that you're working with and only shows the areas where it intersects or overlaps with the masks before it. And then as that mask expands, more and more of our original shape gets revealed. So that gives us a nice wipe. Let's add a little bit of a feather to this mask as well. In fact, let's add a lot of feather. And now as we scrub our playhead, the shape created by our first four masks gets gradually revealed by the final mask we created. So that pretty much covers the basics of working with masks. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Hope you learned something. If you wanted, you could use the techniques that we've looked at here to add a wipe to the text as well using a mask or to finish off this title by wiping it off of the screen after it had been read. So you might want to experiment with that. In the Space Nebula tutorial by Simon Jones, you can see another practical application of masks. So you might want to check that out. And I also recommend the original music video that served as a backdrop for our title here. It's a great song I got to work on a while back, and I just recycled the footage for this project. Keep an eye on the HitFilm channel as well. Maybe subscribe if you haven't yet so you don't miss any of our future tutorials. And thanks again for watching.